Welcome everyone. You are in the right place to see what's new in the AEC industry collection with your presenter, Bryant Quinney. Bryant, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Janet. And hello everybody. Welcome to a little demonstration and a little more chit chat and kind of point out what we're looking at in terms of the uh, latest and greatest from the Autodesk line of products for infrastructure. That will be Civil 3D 2019 and the updated version of InfraWorks 2019. Okay, let's start with talking about um, the design enhancements because you uh, just jump right into it when in terms of what you want to see. What am I going to see that's different? Okay, so I have 2019 open of Civil 3D with a um, kind of fun drawing in the background. So you're going to see that the environment looks the same, behaves the same, a couple of little things that are new. Up in the upper left, uh, thanks to all things going mobile, we now have the ability to open uh, drawings from AutoCAD web and mobile as well as save to it as well. So you can save locally and open um, remotely as well. So you got to have a plug-in, okay? I have Read and agree, install, go through all of that, but you have that ability to go straight to that. Okay, as we move through um, working with various programs that need to talk to each other. Okay, we're going to go over a little bit of this with uh, talking about Revit and InfraWorks. Yes, I did say Revit. We there is some oper uh, interoperability we're going to discuss later, but uh, we are now seeing some more components and features that start to talk to everything in the cloud, if you will. So uh, being able to access things um, in the cloud and on the go. So mobile, I can access it from a mobile device and get my drawing data while I'm out in the field, need to see something, mark it up, bam, there I go, save it back. And the unlucky guys who never get out of the office uh, get to make changes to whatever, okay? So that's one new thing you'll see right off the bat, okay? Um, for those who have vehicle tracking, let me deviate on that for a sec. There are a couple of new features in terms of that um, with roundabouts. Uh, so there's improved surface generation and roundabouts in their interactivity. I currently do not have that loaded up here, but I just figured I'd throw that in. Um, a nice utility um, for Civil 3D is actually external of the program. I'm going to jump over and go down to my Civil 3D. Yes, I have a lot of Autodesk products. There's a new utility called Autodesk Batch Save Utility. Okay, If I launch that, what that allows me to do is look in any folder and save to a particular Civil 3D version. Notice it will only go back so far, and there is a caveat to that. So for those of you who have not noticed this or have not heard or uh, caught that through the grapevine, the Civil 3D objects from 2018 on forward do not go backwards to 2017. So keep that in mind when looking at, uh, when looking at that. There's also some options down below that give us that uh, in terms of, hey, do, uh, skip the drawings that are incompat incompatible with the target Civil 3D version. So let me talk about that a second. If I select up here that I wanted to save a group of drawings in a folder, okay, I can tell it to skip those that are not compatible with 2017. So what that's going to do is, hey, convert all of these drawings as long as they do not have Civil 3D draw, uh, data in it. If it sees that there is one in it, it's going to skip it and move on. So it's going to look for data that it can move back to 2017 which would be just basic line work geometry, okay, and textual objects, all right. Um, other, plenty of other uh, options as well. You can set it to uh, discreetly look between different dates as far as if it was saved before a date or saved after a date, you can convert it. You can exclude uh, folders or subfolders within your location. So. If I picked a directory, I can exclude any subfolders I might have in there. Um, hit start, it processes, gives you a summary of what it's um, processed, and gives you a log of what it did during the process. Okay, this is external of this, of uh, the program. 
to where you can convert entire projects. Works outside of Civil 3D, so I don't even have to have this running. As you saw, it was totally separate. You can have custom scripts, and it comes with um, a couple of scripts, such as default clean. So if I take a look at what that says in there, so, okay. So these are the procedures it's calling out um, in terms of running that script for each file that it finds in that directory. And excuse my voice, I've been talking all week in class. Um, <clears throat> Also, the other one that it has is just doing a queue save script. Okay, so it jumps into the drawing, queue saves it to that version, file DIA, one, close and quit. All right, that is the um, batch save utility. Oh, another thing about that, for those who are not yet rolling out 2019, um, there's no timetable on when it will be available, but it will be available as a separate download. Okay. So that is key. You don't have to have 2019 for it. Um, sometime in the near future, they'll allow you. Know, you'll be able to download that separately and still be productive using that going forward. Okay. All right. So let's talk about. Um, uh, da, da, da. Yeah, let's talk about profiles for a second. All right. So I have a profile uh, view here. A couple of different things going on with profiles. I'm going to jump in and just lay out a design profile. And as I like to tell you all, this is not how I design. So I'm just going to throw in some tangents. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop there. But I'm going to draw in another tangent back here and say, well, I'm going to tie in back here. Maybe there's some design constraints. Okay, so I just threw that in there just to mimic what you may see when you're working. I know that this may need to hold a slope, this may need to hold a certain slope, but I don't know the information about where they're going to inter interact. Um, ignore the fact that uh, there may be a manhole over here. So what I can do is use this new tool, be found under your tangents, to be able to solve the tangent intersection. Okay, so I pick the before and I pick the next entity, or I have other options, point, station, and elevation. I'll just pick this other one that I have, and it joins them together. Okay, so I get a new PVI at that location. All right, found in the toolbar. Now, a note about that, that um, feature does not go backwards to 2018. Okay, that is brand new. Uh, of course, if I save this back to a 2018 version, all it's going to see is a profile, uh, a finished profile. That's fine, but don't expect to suddenly get, have that enabled when you go backwards. Okay, you're not going to see that command. Okay, so that does allow you to design from known conditions and leverage uh, specific design conditions that you may find within your project. Okay, nice little feature kind of add to our little arsenal of things to do, okay? So let me do something with this. I'm going to, um, let me save this, okay? I'm going to make a few changes with this drawing so I can show you my next little trick, okay? So I'm going to change that profile. Uh, oh, why don't I, no, I'm going to change I'm going to change something basic over here, too. Okay, I'm going to move this to this location. Um, and what else can I do? I feel, feel a little destructive today. I'm going to move this structure location a little further out. Okay, that was, um, these are disconnected and everything, so let me undo that last one. I'll need to reconnect this network first. Okay, there. If you'll remember, that is a feature that was introduced in a point one or point two feature uh, for 2018. It does come forward, reconnect your network. All right, so I like that. I'm going to save as, okay, I don't like this before. I'm going to actually call that. I like that after. All right, so 
I do all that to do this. I need to see the differences between those two drawings. Okay, there's a new feature called Drawing Compare. So if I go up here to my icon, go to Drawing Utilities. Drawing Compare does exactly what I expect it to do. Okay, so it will look at what you've recently had open if you hit this drop down or you can hit the ellipse button. So what it does is it will look at these two drawings, compare them, and open a comparison drawing with those two items in it. And the difference is in, they'll take on these colors, okay? So if I wanted to use a different color, by default it's green and red. So the before will be in green and anything after will be in red. So let's say, I think this was my before, yeah. And let's go after, okay? So compare runs through its operations. When it comes up, it will look a little strange, but the main focus is what is different. Okay? So it names it compare and the name of your drawing, the second one, which will be the comparison. So let's take a look. So you get objects such as revision clouds, okay, on your markups drawing. So these objects did change. If I had labeling such as my slopes, and obviously those will have changed, they will have green and red objects. So the before would have a green label uh, or a mask around it, and the after would have the red. Okay, But uh, you get the revision cloud to draw your attention to what is different. And there uh, are some differences. This is what's before down here. So um, see the lettering behind it. Let's go look at our plan view. Now, whoa, we got a big revision cloud because it says, in this area, pay attention. Down here is the green. Our pipe network has changed because I moved my structure over here. So that is my after. Uh, let's look over here. I did a little something here with this stop. That's the before. That's the after. Okay? So taking a look at that, let's see what object type that was. If it was a polyline. Okay? That was a polyline with a width to, uh, set to it. So all I did was just move that, and this works for basic AutoCAD objects. This is not a Civil 3D specific feature, but a pretty nifty one that's very handy and works within Civil 3D. So it is, um, it is applicable to regular AutoCAD drawings, okay, so our dummy objects, if you will, okay. Also, a little something here, so since I'm in the compare drawing, our contextual cloud, or our contextual ribbon, excuse me, uh, shows us what's going on. So we can control the draw order of which one was shown. So if there's something on top of the other and you can't quite see what the difference is, you have a draw order you can choose. Um, you can choose the to override the colors after the fact or turn them off. Uh, and everything in gray is common to both. So notice I did not change the bulk of the drawing, so it's all gray. So, for instance, if my surface data had changed, it will let me know that that changed, okay? If I had contouring on across my site, that will have changed. Stationing, if it would have changed, that would have taken on a color, okay? So, I think you get the point in that, but it's a really, really slick, um, really slick change or addition to our already growing tool set here, okay? You also uh, keep track of what your change sets are. so. Notice we're looking at three of them. There's there's three changes here. So one, two, and three. Did three different things. Okay. All right. So it's always interesting because I don't get the feedback. So this is uh this gets interesting. All right. So um, for those who are using other extensions and country kits, uh, regional extensions uh, such as River. Um, Geotechnical, um, our geotechnical module, those are not yet av uh, available. Those will be made available coming up. Uh, there's no particular timetable that has been given to us or shared with us in terms of information. We're kind of left out in the dark for those specifics. But uh, we do have word from Autodesk that they are in development. They've got to check, make sure uh, all the kinks are worked out, that um, it is set to go. But um, so we understand that. For those of you who use those features in your current workflow processes, 
uh, kind of need those items, they are not yet made available for 2019. However, storm and sanitary sewer analysis uh, 2019 is available. Okay, so that is available to be able to analyze your networks to and from Civil 3D and SSA. All right. So that's pretty much what I have on Civil 3D. Um, I'm going to hop over to InfoWorks, okay, and I'm going to jump back to my home screen, the surface we'll be playing with, all right? So 2019, um, a little something about that. This is a um, model I was working with in 2019 when working with watersheds. There will be a video tech tip that I will have coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that on our um, on Imagine It site. So, okay, so the biggest recommendation here is when working in 2019, upgrade to a copy, all right? So, for instance, if I'm wanting to open um, this model, if I'm wanting to open this model, there we go. All right, so it lets you know that there is an upgrade needed. Um, upgrade a copy, that way in case anything kind of flaky goes on and it's unexpected, it doesn't destroy your model because you're not able to go backwards, all right? That has been a consistent in here. So notice you don't get the InfraWorks 2019, 2018, and everything installed on the same machine. Uh, you just have InfraWorks, okay? So you always want to upgrade a copy and work with that. Any further questions about it, hit the link, which upgrade option do I want? <laughs> Obviously a copy, okay? So what I did is I have a copy over here um, that I've been looking at and working with. And as it thinks to open that, I'm actually going to flip right back to the home screen, take a look at some key differences here. So InfraWorks previously had been working within its own cloud system. This is a huge change here because it works with BIM 360 now. Okay, this is the cloud solution for InfraWorks 2019. Um, key reasons for that. We need to be able to integrate with other project documents, such as uh, items with Revit, okay? Um, the other things dealing with Civil 3D, and we need a central storage that's continuous for things now that, are, that were already in place before InfraWorks uh, really took off, as well as other plans coming down the line, okay? so. You will see that in when you create a new model, you now have the collaborate, okay? It is called collaborate now. So I would be able to choose that or work locally, all right? So you will notice that is a key difference. All right, so back into my model. Um, something that's pretty interesting is when working in our views, Let's say I go over to my engineering view, okay? You'll notice now, because I'm looking at a surface, let me let me back up one and explain what I'm looking at. Okay, this is a surface, the grayish area. All these yellow objects are watershed areas, okay? So before we get confused jumping into the engineering view, so we see what we're looking at, okay? So we get a 10 view of our objects and surface, and you get all of these numbers. Guess what those are? Those are contour labels, okay? So if I look at the options for this, for this view, all right, um, we have a new label up here. Let me get that out of the way so you can see better. We have a new terrain setting. Before I switch to that, let me show you what's happening before that. If I turn off wireframe in this view, we now have contours that show for our surface. So we have a simultaneous view. That is very good. I like that. Okay, so we have dynamic labeling that lets us know, okay, what elevations am I looking at? And notice they do kind of move around as you pivot and orbit about your model, um, as you get to the extents of the model as well. They kind of move around for you until they show kind of a default map and GIS behavior, if you will, so enough of that. Um, if I hop over to this new icon, which is for terrain, you can make those settings as, in terms of what are your major and minor intervals, okay? Um, as well as do you want to display the contour lines? I kind of want to do that. That's pretty much why it's on. And setting thicknesses, the colors, yada, yada, everything on there, okay? 
and being a, being able to work with multiple terrain themes. Okay, so, um, so that's pretty neat, pretty slick, brand new, good stuff. All right, so I like it. Hope you like that too. All right, so let me hop back to conceptual view. It's not something I really wanted to do with my model, but I'm going to show you something because I have a nice little model of rolling terrain here. I'm out of Texas, so we don't have a lot of rolling terrain to be able to work with this. But this new feature is tunnels. Okay. First, what I'll do is I'm going to drop in a road. So let me drop in a component road. And here's something you're going to notice right off the bat when I do this. Okay. Let me jump in. Da, da, da. There we go. All right. All right, so something you notice right off the bat is it's just floating. Of course, it's draped to my surface. I'm going to grab this guy back here. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to make sure it interferes with my surface for a good reason, okay? I hope I don't find something, some of someone's design that goes driving like that for fear of caving in. All right, so what I'm going to do here is under the bridges section, what I'm going to do is use this new feature, Tunnel. Okay. So first prompt is to cl uh, click the Select. I, I, I click to select the start and end stations of your tunnel. Okay. So I can start the station by typing it in. Notice it's waiting for me. All right. And I can fashion its length and tell it what end station. I'm just going to pick a couple of points and say, well, let's start this tunnel. Uh, this looks like I don't want to work with that there. And See, it helps if I click both of those. All right. So it actually it actually just registered both as two. So let me do that again. I guess I didn't do a firm click. Here's my start station, and I'm just going to pick something back here. All right. I could get a little more refined, but thanks to my view angle location, I'm looking at. You know, I've kind of left a hole in there. I can override that later. But let's get down in here and see what we're looking at. What did, what did we do to the model? Hey, I've got a tunnel. All right. So, yeah, really got a tunnel. Okay. You want to get that into your model, be able to work with tunnels, subsurface, subterranean. There you go. New tunnel object. Okay. So, um, in looking at this information, uh, Let's see, if I select this guy, come on, are you going to let me work? Yeah. All right, so over here on the right, set your materials, uh, textures, all the other typical stuff we're used to with InfraWorks. Uh, override your heights, how the left and right lanes work, what your median width, wall thicknesses, sidewalks and drainage if you want. Okay, really good stuff. Okay, that is new feature, tunnels. Okay, pretty good stuff, pretty good. All right, um, taking a uh, similar feature step, well, not really similar feature, but uh, in terms of our design options and capabilities, let me get this out of here because I'm not going to use that later. Um, a little something of note is we've had the ability to put in our steel plate girder bridges. Okay, so we're on to talking about bridges now. Um, we do have the um, ability to do the line girder analysis. Okay, so excuse me for having little pop-ups come over here. All right, but that is new, line girder analysis for our bridges. Okay, specific to the steel girders. All right, so um, you saw me drop in that uh, component road model, okay, uh, back here when I wanted to throw in a component road model. Let's see, there we go. All right. There are several updates to it. Notice it's not putting in a curve by default, uh, but there's additional um, functions that have been added to it in terms of capabilities. Notice the stationing that ghosts and shows on the screen. All right. So 
little something I want to kind of talk about um, in terms of a hot fix. So the hot fix one is already out, and what it does is address any or correct any issues you may come across after upgrading to 2019 when talking about how intersections and circular roads behave. There may be some cleanup that you're going to need to do. It does not automatically uh, merge some of the components together. Okay, not sure where they're going with that, but this is where we are. Okay, beforehand it used it did the cleanup automatically for you. All right, does not do that um, now. Okay, so backing up on that, um, yeah. So it's the curb returns I'm talking about uh, on the auto blending. If I left anybody behind on that, um, curb returns on intersecting roads. Okay. So InfraWorks has a new modeling engine to it, which, are, which is definitely why if you upgrade a model, you definitely want to upgrade a copy because you're in, you are not going back. It's do or die right there, okay? Um, you definitely will notice some behavioral differences on a lot of things. You see some more stability, see better speed with navigating your model, all right? You also have shared views, okay? So. In terms of looking at collaboration, we'll get off the scary stuff of what happens to my model and everything. If I'm trying to collaborate um, external of anyone who even owns InfraWorks, if I need to give them some information about this project model, okay, I can hit the Shared Views button, new, get a new shared view. I can use the entire model or something that's a little more specific to them. okay. So I can give this view a name, okay, I'll just leave it as is, and call out what the um, area is going to be. So I'll pick a box, okay, this area in particular, yeah, that's good, all right. And I would be able to, it gives me the uh, coordinates, of course, share, and what that does is publish that online to where it's probably not going to do it right now, it's going to take a little while. but it will publish online to be able to give you the ability to share a link with others uh, for public viewing. So you can send that link to someone, and what they can do is navigate through your model in their browser, okay, and only see within that boundary. So there's our uh, area. Let me view it in the browser, see what we come up with. It may or may not be there. Hey, let's go take a look. All right. So that area of my model, okay, it's a little inverted. My controls are inverted, so my apologies there. Um, and it shows what was in the model, okay, only in that bounding box where you can, the user, not you, not you, hopefully you're the one pushing it out, where those who are viewing it can actually leave comments about it. By default, the comments stay for 30 days, but on your end when looking at it, you can delete those comments. They can also do... Uh, take screenshots, print it out, uh, make red line markups to it uh, for any questions or concerns, and this adds more to our ability to collaborate uh, within our model now, okay? So you want to get a section, do some measuring. You got these tips down at the bottom. There's the markups, uh, take you back to a home view, okay? So that is our home view we have set, which is in plan, okay? allowing them to navigate, all right? More slick stuff, all right, okay? Shared views are kept in a list over here, so you can um, remove them or delete, okay? You can extend the, extend the um, abilities of it. You can come back to it and send that link out. Someone didn't get the link, come back in here, recopy it, send it out. Okay, so you can have multiple views. These are shared views, which are for collaboration in the cloud. All right. So you'll notice how a lot of the uh, features that are more in your face are have to do with collaboration. Okay, so um, we are able to collaborate directly with Revit models because it is all in a BIM 360 environment. Okay, so... Oh, a little something I forgot to tell you in terms of that collaboration is back on Civil 3D. 
excuse me if I'm dizzying anybody yet. If I were to um, outport, um, outport, that's a new one. Okay, so being able to um, export my model. Okay, let's see. I, where I'm going with this is there's there's a difference here. We've been able to output our model before working with InfraWorks. Okay, we export an IMX. Okay, IMX file. Uh, save the drawing before. Okay, only IMX. But when inserting, okay, new thing we can do on this when we haven't. It's not new to import a an IMX. However, we can now import the SQLite. So. From InfraWorks, we don't have to export an IMX in order to bring that information into Civil 3D. Okay, you can go straight to the SQL file and do it. Okay, the same dialog box allows you to go right through the IMX as well. Okay, so same dialog box, new option. Okay, uh, or you can do all of this over here on the uh, Autodesk InfraWorks tab as well. Okay. So what Autodesk is doing with that is allowing greater document management because of being interoperable between or within their whole ecosystem of Autodesk products. Okay, so you've got your Navisworks, you've got your Revit, Civil 3D, InfraWorks, uh, and being able to manage all of that. So there's more good stuff that's coming down the line, but this is their, these are some of their initial changes that they're doing going forward with this. All right, uh, with shared views, okay? That's for those who do not have civil uh, or InfraWorks and you just need to share some specific information with them uh, with, with another interested party in your project or model, okay? So a lot, a lot of stuff coming down the line, uh, more to see on that, okay? Uh, another change in terms of interoperability is when I'm, if I had road work through here, if I had a civil 3D model of this, first of all, um, and I had a corridor design, when I import that corridor into InfraWorks, um, it gives me, well, obviously it gives me a corridor, it gives me a road, okay, and gives me the, uh, exactly what I would exist, but as a basic corridor and using simple sub-assemblies or simple assemblies within it, okay? So as I bring that in, you have the corridor model. We can set all of that over here when we um, do our output, okay? Uh, let me go ahead. Yeah, sure, yes. Eh, something happened to my dialog box for that. Yes, I do. Save drawing, yeah, save that as that, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave it at that, leave it at that. So that dialog box should be, uh, would be present if I remember what that is. Failed to get sample points, oh no. Did not like that alignment. Okay. All right, I may come back to that, never know. All right, so in terms of, um, well, actually, what I want to do is I need to go look at the settings first, look at work with that, because that's the more pertinent part. I actually did not need to go export the drawing to get to this. Um, we now have this section for component roads um, and setting out corridors and assemblies on the Civil 3D side. How does it handle that? Okay, so you can say, well, we got basic, all codes. And what assemblies? Well, this drawing is not chock full of assemblies. I can make my settings for alignments and profiles when it does that, uh, when it exchanges information. Okay, so for instance, if I do the road over in InfraWorks, when it comes into Civil 3D, of course, you get the alignment and profile. And these are all the settings it takes to bring those defaults um, back and forth and talking between the two, okay? And if you want to have it automatically build that corridor after importing, seeing that I had a road over in InfraWorks, come into here, let it build the corridor for you. So that's one less step you would need to do. And all the settings contained in there say, are basically telling the program, well, what assembly am I going to use for this? And how am I handling my alignments and profiles when I bring them in? Okay, so more than just 
what layer they go on or whatever. It's more or less how it's handling that data. Okay. Um, you'll also notice with uh, BIM 360 information that um, web viewing is very much improved when showing the data. Um, on the web, it's even better than the mobile viewer. Okay. Any user settings, you can view, edit, upload, and control those. All right. So more and more things that they're doing with BIM 360 in terms of collaboration, being able to uh, integrate or in, and interact within a project environment. Okay. So let's see. Oh, that's another thing I want to do. Um, when talking about rail, because there's more development going on with rail design improvements, um, let's see. In the subassembly composer, yeah, this is for anybody that's looked at the diagrams of any of these, this one's probably the most involved going on. All right. So reflecting rail can't, okay? Um, it's fully supported um, within subassembly composer. So yay, there we go with that. Okay, lots of coding, lots of linking, uh, points, shapes, links in there, working with that, okay, on how to get rail design going in there. For those who um, are not interested in that and don't do it, don't worry. Okay, so um, also the information we had or the updates we had from 2018.1 and 2018.2, they're following in that same mold. They're not just going to be issued as calling service packs. They're going to be the uh, .1, .2 features. So anyway, so the past features from 2018 are pulled forward with um, the different road rehab corridor modeling, different things that were issued um, as far as new features rather than just fixes to items. Each of their releases, the so I would assume or I would assume, but expect to see some new features added with 2019.1 and point two. You're going to see additional features um, coupled with any fixes for anything that may have any odd behavior of uh, how the program operates right out the gate, but with the initial point zero release. Okay, so all of these are already in 2018.2 and they are now in the 2019.0. So you install, you get all of these um, juicy bits of capability, all right? So with that in mind, um, that is what I have for that, um, for all of this, okay? So that is our new features, new interoperabilities, collaboration, Jana, what you got for me? One moment while I end today's recording. Thank you.